Hello and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. I'm glad that you've joined us today. We are living certainly in critical times as we're watching wars and rumors of wars all around our globe. And I want to zero in today on what is one of the indicators that's found in the Word of God concerning the last day signs of anti-Semitism rising as it is done on an unprecedented scale. The numbers are off the charts and as we're watching Israel literally fight for its life, we're watching college campuses, universities, uh, and much rhetoric and much uh, hate speech that's going on around the world in places like uh, Germany, in London, in Paris, and across the United States. It's very troubling. It's bringing us to a place that the Bible lets us know that even in the center and the epicenter of Israel would become what the Bible calls a burdensome stone in the last days. Let me share with some, some things that uh, are happening in the news that's giving us these uh, severe warnings of things to come. The Israeli president writes a letter to the American universities urging them to fight anti-Semitism. This is what he says in brief in his letter. He says, never as someone who's always looked up to the standards of American universities could I have foreseen the images and voices that have reached me since the tragedy of October 7th, that being the day when the terrorist group Hamas uh, entered in from Gaza into uh, southern Israel and slaughtered, burned, beheaded, uh, tortured, and created hostages, took hostages back into Gaza. As the president of Israel, he goes on to say, I have spent the past months traveling among devastated Israeli communities, more than 1,400 grieving families, and the relatives of more than 240 hostages. In the letter, Herzog said, and he reminisces on the time when he spent at Cornell University and New York University, where he was exposed to the highest standards of academic inquiry and of debate, and the distinctly American atmosphere of intellectual freedom. However, he said he has been alarmed by ugly incidences of anti-Semitism and far-left fervor on college campuses over the past months. He goes on to say that after the, uh, over the past months, he's been trying to comfort survivors of October 7th terrorist attack, as, as it is now marked the largest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. I want you to get that in your mind, because history that has been canceled in recent years is denying the Holocaust altogether, and there are certain members even of Congress that have done such. He goes on in his letter to say, as while, and while doing so, I hear of Jewish students harassed on, on Harvard University, a Jewish student assaulted at Tulane, Jewish students locked in the library at Cooper University as mobs shout outside uh, and signs accusing Israel of genocide, swastikas painted on dorm room doors, uh, hateful and intimidating demonstrations, too many, he says, to list. He goes on in this letter to say this conflict is far more than a clash between Israel and Hamas. At stake is whether the enlightened world will defend the basic norms of humanity or choose to accept, even support, their violation. He wrote, this will either be a teaching moment that moves us toward constructive action or a moment of irreversible decline. These are serious words by the president of Israel and in further articles, uh, here is the Democratic squad members. Uh, Representative Tlaib uses the chant, which calls for genocide of the Israeli, uh, of Israel's destruction. She says and endorses it. Uh, the chant references the land between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea, where Israel exists. In this article, an anti-Israel sign with the phrase, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. That's at a protest at Tulane University. This is calling for the destruction of Israel entirely. According to this article from the river to the sea, uh, they say is an inspirational call for freedom, human rights, and peaceful coexistence, not death or destruction or hate, as what she said. But that's not what the Congress, the House of Representatives, made sure to make clear yesterday. They voted in the House as I'm taping this on Tuesday, the 7th of November, to censor uh, Representative Tlaib over her anti-Israel, anti-Semitic comments. Now, a lot of that is basically uh, just 
symbolism, but at the same time, it should speak volumes. And there should certainly be a pushback in our societies from pastors in pulpits and from Christians against this kind of rhetoric and standing up for the rights of Israel. Some have said in recent days that there should be a pause or a ceasefire, even from the President of the United States. But I want to make it clear, before October the 7th, there was a ceasefire between Hamas and Israel, and Hamas broke that ceasefire in the atrocities that have gone on. And now Israel must defend itself from terrorist organizations. As I'm making this tape here today to send out to you in this briefing, there have been uh, comments rising that I received even just this morning concerning terrorist activity on the rise right here in the United States of America. You've heard that from the FBI. And I want you to understand that these are all signs of the imminent return of Jesus Christ, the violence in the land, but specifically anti-Semitism, the attacks against God's chosen people, the state of Israel, the nation of Israel, and the Jewish people.